Hey, there. I know what you're saying. Where the hell have you been? And I haven't been here for a while because I was doing certain things. Like, I went to New York. I went to Colorado. Then I shot a TV show with Robert Downey Jr. Down this, were you down this and then time? I went to see Fluffy. Uh, You guys don't care any of that stuff. Let's talk about battery and battery projects. All right, as you know, this channel is all about DIY battery projects, right? Uh, and why we do that? Well, it's because it's good for your brain. You exercise your brain learning new tricks and new ways of building stuff and using your hands and using machinery and equipment and stuff. Uh, it's good for your pocket because most of the time DIY projects can be done cheaper than already store-bought. Like, you know devices or batteries or whatever uh, and so it's also good for the environment because you are reusing something that would otherwise is trash right or somebody doesn't want it anymore and so if you find a second life a second use for that then you keep it from the landfills you keep it from going into early retirement where they break it all down to the essential parts right and that's a good thing because that is wasteful it's better to get the most use out of things that that took them to be made into a product right and so that's why secondhand reusing is a good thing and so today we're going to talk about these battery boxes so these are batteries that came to us and a lot of times what happens is that the contracts stipulate that we have to uh, take these apart. So we can't sell them as is. So we have to make sure that the customer that gets them cannot just replace uh, the same battery into the same machine where it comes from, right? And so what we have to do is sometimes take the battery packs out of the uh, boxes and then cut the connectors, all that sort of stuff, right? And so that's what we've done here. We've taken the batteries out of here and then we've sold them on our website and you guys have bought them and use them in other DIY projects. But now we have a bunch of these, hundreds of these little boxes that we can, well, one, we can scrap. We can just send them to the scrapper and then they'll, you know, they'll melt them down and then you use the, the, the raw materials, right? But again, that is the worst thing you can do because you're taking a box that took a lot of work to be made into a box and then you're just undoing it. You're just throwing it away. You're just undoing all that work. So, so it's better if you were to find a use where you actually get to use this as a box and not just for the uh, raw materials that it's got in there, right? So that's what we're doing. We're finding a way that you can use reuse battery cells and put them back in here and now you can use it. And this way, now it's a brand new battery right and uh it's cheap because i mean otherwise we would have to like just scrap these and you don't get much value with the scrap uh value of this is not much right it's it's better if you use it as a box uh and so you can make a whole battery box that is uh good okay so let's start the way you reuse this box is by figuring a way to put batteries back in here right but you want to do it in a good way in a classic way and so one way that you could do it is by using our 7S PCB boards. These are boards that we've been selling now for years. And they're 7S, they're seven cells in series. So they're 24 volts and they're stackable like this. And so the more you stack, the bigger the battery gets, right? Now the problem is that they, they fit in here. And what I wanna do is make a 48 volt battery, right? And so they have to be equal, uh, pairs of these boards right so if this is 24 and then this is 24 then connecting them in series becomes 48 and so you can't have six of these boards well actually i guess you can but no they have to be in the same group because six three don't fit high like that right the the, the third one will hit over here so this is the max that you can do you can do four boards because then you have to put a bms and then you have to put a board that interconnects everything in there in series and so this is the max that you can do. Unfortunately, it's a small box and it's gonna be a small battery. But what you, we have to do is design a PCB board that goes in here and hopefully we can use the mounting, the original mounting uh, holes for this box to attach this new circuit board that's gonna go in here. So let's go to the computer and then design it. Now that we are here in our computer, in our software, by the way, there's a myriad of these softwares that you can use to design boards. I'm just using a particular one and you could use the same one or you can use any of the other ones. Here's what I got. 
basically got measure all the bolts holes on the bottom of that box and here i have them and i measure them right so this is the pattern that pattern then i turned it into this and this one has layers and those layers are gonna be for the board so here let me just explain here so th this is just pads right here they serve no purpose other than just to have the copper because they're gonna put the copper in there so this is just uh this is just mechanical basically just to support the other board that's gonna be on top of that right but this layer this is a top layer then this now starts taking the current from the negative bus bar which is the uh standoff that's on those boards right that's how those are designed to to transmit the current through the standoffs they're brass standoffs and they can carry quite a bit of current so these ones right here are connected here so this pad right here is the negative right and then this pad right here is the positive and they are separated by this gap here so this positive pad goes all the way over here and you can see this is not connected if you do, uh, disconnect the, or turn off the, the lower bottom layer you can see that this pad right here is not connected to this pad there's this uh, portion right so this is not connected here so this is just passing through and once it's passing through then it connects all the way uh to here to this one to positive uh pad that is going to be to remove the current from this board right so that's how that works and then this negative one it goes in here and then it's got all these vias here which connect to the other side of the board uh and then it goes over here and it does the same thing. It connects to the other side of the board. And so when you turn on the bottom layer, you get to see what happens there. So uh, where is it at? Here's the negative one, right? Yeah, see how it goes in there and connects to the bottom layer? So now this bottom layer, this whole bottom layer becomes negative. And here's another connection goes all the way down here and it connects again so that's just a redundant connection and so now this pad right here is all negative and over here it doesn't touch this pad because that's positive pad right and so now what happens is uh, bottom here we go let's see how does this work oh yeah yeah so this negative pad connects to this positive pad because that's the series connection there. So this is the positive pad from this board, the second board, right? Because you're gonna connect them in series. And then, then that goes through the batteries and then it dumps over here again, the negative one. And then the negative goes through a fuse, 15 amp fuse, and then that fuse goes to this pad right here, which is gonna be the B minus pad on the actual BMS that we're going to put in here. And then what comes out of the BMS, then it goes to the negative over here. This is this pad right here, and then it goes in here, right? And so that is a very simple design, right? This, all it does is put two of those boards in series, and it makes them go through this BMS thing right here. Uh, all of these ones right here are uh, trace fuses for the uh, balance leads that are going to be on these boards and then half of those uh, pins will go to the first board and then half of the other pins go to the second one so if you see this ones right here are on this side of this connector and then those are on this side of this connector because that's they're in series and so that's the way so okay so now that we've seen that now we have to combine the two boards to try to make it a lot of a little bit easier because now you could only have to order one board instead of two right and so we combine the two boards the little one is right here so all we have to do is just copy it and then push it and there we go so we want to turn it around here we go and then what we do is we put it right here with a little cut in the middle there so you're able to just break it off 
So that way it's a single board that's got the two boards that you need. So let's order that. One hour later. All right, good news. The boards have arrived. Here it is. So of course, like we changed in the design, right? Now the little board is included in here. All you have to do is break it up, right? And this breaks easy, I think. Yeah, see, just like that. This now is the secondary board and you connect the cables in there and then you do the whole thing. So I'm not gonna show you exactly how to do every single step. I'm just gonna talk about what we ended up doing here. Here is the secondary board. You just have to put an XT90 connector in there and then some cables. In this case, we chose uh, 12 American wire gauge and then we just soldered those cables onto here. We soldered the BMS right into those little lines there and then put a uh, 20 amp fuse in there and though, even though it's a 15 amp, you can, you know, we just didn't have a 15 amp. So then we ended up putting a 20, you could do that. It's not that critical of a thing. And then uh, you have to populate uh, all the other stuff, right? These two connectors here, and then that's it. There's not much to this. The rest, we just put these uh, little standoffs on these holes. And then those now are going to match into those existing holes there. Right? And then these will match over here. Then you can put this guy, flip it around, put some screws in there, and then we're going to be done. Okay, but before we do that, let's populate these boards these are regular boards the you the ones that you can get on our website and we've been selling them forever so we're going to populate those in there it's very very easy all right so let's populate these battery boxes and then put them in here and then we can install them on the box in this case we're going to be using some new batteries uh, i'm going to link these on the description of this video and uh all you have to do is mount them positive to positive and negative to negative right here we go. So I suggest you put them the positive first and then you push down the negative. All right, we're using screws to install those boards in there. Okay, so then you just connect this. Okay, so this one right here, we're gonna attempt to do this backwards. Put this thing in there because it gets really tight. Again, we're gonna use screws. And there we go. Here's a little module. Now the last thing is to put this one in the box. Okay, so these two go over here and then these two have to line up with these screws holes. go probably the best way is to do it like this then we go to the back over here here we go and then finally five millimeter screws and nuts to put this guy all right the last thing to do is just to put the cover actually it goes the other way and you just put all the screws on the side here, or a few of them, I don't know, whatever. It does have these tiny little holes that are there due to the, the old application, whatever was inside here had extra parts. So it, 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 is, it is gonna be a vented uh, enclosure, but you know, if it, cells got caught fire in there, then for the most part, that would be contained inside of this box and that's the reason for building boxes it's kind of small but that's why we're selling cheap and there's a bunch of them so you could build this into a larger system right here this is already a bms standalone battery uh 48 volts so you can connect this into a large you know whole house inverter uh 48 volt inverter right and uh, if you make a bunch of them, build a bunch of them, then 
uh, they're all BMS and they're all working together. They're all charging. You charge it through the same port in here and discharge it in there. Uh, and this is a good way to build a larger system uh, battery. And you could, they could be hot swappable because, well, it's got a connector back here. So you could just push it into there and then connect the thing and then connect more. You just have to make sure that they are the same voltage when you connect them in there because these will, uh, they will make a spark if there's a large inrush, right? If there's a lot, of, but you know, it's a simple little battery box that you can use. We have these available at Jack 35, they're cheap and uh, we're doing good by the environment because we're reusing one of these battery boxes that was used for a different uh, application. Now we're finding a second application and you're keeping these from a landfill and you're keeping these from going into being just melted and just being you know used for the raw materials because they are boxes and it's better to use it as a box than it is to just melt it and make something else out of it, right? So there you go. If you're interested in this project, uh, go ahead and visit the links down below where this project is sponsored by PCB Way. And uh, you can go and download all the Gerber files so that you can print these uh, and put them in there. I will also have all the links so that you can order all the parts that it takes to build this battery. All right. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.